Now, this is uh, the pattern I'm going to be tying. It's basically just a small uh, dry fly emerger. Uh, it's an old style fly. This goes way, way back, probably 60s and 70s. It was very, I mean, I've seen videos way back then when they were tying flies like this. Basically, these were to give them your floating your nymph pattern uh, by putting a wing and a hackle in front. So, that's your nymph at the back. Wing in the front, wee bit of hackle just to lift it, and it gives a great impression of the an emerging. It's a great pattern today, and uh, and certainly worth tying. They're they're real really easy to tie. Hook choice is up to yourself. Different sizes depends on the species of fly. This is a size 16. It's a full and mill. It's a, just basically a dry fly hook. Thread I'm going to be using. I'm using the Olive Dunn uh, in uni. Just going to wax the thread to get it started. Now I'm going to start the thread in the centre of the hook. So we come in here just at this point, and then we two or three turns down. Trim away. Tail fibres can be cock hackle. Uh, in this case, I'm using this is white and cock de Leon fibres. Gives a great impression of a shock as much as a tail. So just bring in the fibres 90 degree from the stem. Make sure they're lined up and then tear them away. Now these are really fine fibres, so to give the impression of the shock you need a wee bit extra. So a good six or so. Tail length, you're looking at shank length over the back. So we measure first, look at the length, we hold that there, and the way down we tie them on top, nice and tight. Keeping them on top, there we are. Trim away. I'm not going to flare them, I'm just going to keep them straight. I'm fine at that. For the body, it could be the thread, you could use the thread or what, you, what I'm going to use here is the, the peacock quill. Now this has been dyed uh, yellow and I've stripped the hair off, or well, most of it anyway. Now you may see some in the end there, so what I do is just tear it towards the back, not much there. Take it away, it's very easy. I recently put a video on showing how I do this, how to remove the hair off, so this is the ones I'm actually using. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I want it to taper from the back up, so down at the tip of it, or the... Basically that's the base of the, the quill, which is a lot thicker. So we want it to taper, so we've got to come further up and trim away. We'll get more of a segment bo segmented body if we tie it in this way. So we tie it down. Protect it by winding over some varnish, or in this case, this is super glue. There's a wee touch of super glue. It'll last far longer if you do this. So we wind up and we form a segmented body with the quill. You see how it gets thicker as we wind up. Here's your great body. Nice and tight, and we can tidy up, break that away. I'm using a fine dubbin now, some like a good a dry fly dubbin to form a ball of a dubbin here at the top. And this is a a medium olive. Now I'm just going to form a ball. I'm going to basically use this to get our nymph like shape. Now leave your cell plenty of room at the front and don't be shy with the ball of dubbin. Make sure it's tight. Now if you look at there so we're halfway up, forms a body, let's say a, another quarter of the way up, which is the thorax, and then we leave an, a, an area or a quarter for tying in the wing and the hackle. Just make sure there's wax on your thread. I'm just going to put some thread down so we can tie onto it. So we've got a nice ball of dubbing there. Now the deer hair I'm using, this is a comparison here. Uh, it's just basically a fine compara down here. Quite dark this piece. You will get in different colours. It just depends on where it's coming from the skin. Depends how dark it really is. This is from the ridge along the back. By the looks of things. So what we do is cut it really close to the skin. Open out these fibres and remove the fluff. You want to remove this fine fluff. Because we're going to stack it. And any broken ends we must remove them. Now we get tips first into the, the stacker, so with the tips of the fibres, they go into the stacker, 
tap on your desk, have a look, you see the tips have all lined up, it's perfect, that's what you're looking for, remove it from the stacker. Now wing length, because it's an emerger you can exaggerate because you want to extend the wing, yeah, you want to be able to see it. I usually go by see the the shank length and slightly less, it's up to yourself, whatever you feel happy with. Now I'm using the dub in here is gonna help flare it. So we pinch this loop on top, come in with three or four turns, just to see how things are sitting. Check the length, if you're happy with the length, that's fine. You see the dubbing at the back there, the sort of the remains of the deer here at the back. Now we're gonna not gonna cut this right close. We're going to give the impression of this the thorax of the nymph. So we want a straight cut at the back and the beginning of the or the length of the thorax, which is there. Now the hackle I'm going to be using this one here. This is a medium done. It's a cock hackle from a Hebert miner from Whiting. Now what I've done here is I've just taken away the fibres to reveal the stem. Now the front of the hackle, I like the hackle to lay back slightly, because it is an emerger. So, it doesn't matter, I mean, I, it just sits better, I feel. But it's up to yourself how you're going to tie this in. So it's the front of the hackle facing towards the eye. And what I do is, so with a bare stem, you can catch it underneath. Two or three turns to make sure it's secure in the area where we've actually cut in the, the deer hair. Lift the deer hair. Now you will see the stem at the bottom there, tie that in, make sure you've got thread down. So because I've done that we've got to then bring the, your wing forward again. So we're going to encourage the hackle to lay back. So there's one turn, so set into the second turn, lift your wing. Now you can put a turn in front if you wish, just to help lift the wing and then catch it. So just basically catch in your hackle. Now, depends on how thick the stem is, times I'll fold this back just to hold it back, but sometimes with the genetic hackles the stems can be quite quite thick. So I'm going to make sure, I'm just going to tie it in, I'm not going to fold it back. I'm using a very fine pair of scissors here to trim away the hackle. Go straight in and what finish. Nice and tight. Put your nail, I usually put my nail on the side of the hook and pull the thread. Making sure it's tight. Trim away. And there we are. And don't worry if the wing sits forward, it is an emerger type fly. Now, basically to get it to sit a wee bit flatter, now the, the wing and the hackle in it just now will float, flat, float the fly really well. But if you want to basically to lay this or get the, the fly to sit nice or on the surface is to trim away the hackle if you want. Now I usually don't do that. I usually just bring these fibres up either side and just use a can like your scissors to bring them up. If you feel there's one or two fibres that are going to get in the way you can trim them away if you wish. But with this one you can see it's, it's Fine, it's plenty. So I'd rather have remove. I'd rather have slightly overdress a dry fly or an emerger, so that I can un take hackle fibers off. I can mess about with it on the river if I feel it's just a wee bit heavy. You can't do that if you if it's obviously really fine. Uh, you've got to. I like to work with a fly like this, and you can see that's that's fine. So basically just to say that's your nymph at the back. You've got your hackle and your deer hair there to float the fly. It's an old style emerger, great wee pattern. Uh, colour combinations you can there's many out there. This is just a nice olive, uh, it's a medium to dark olive, which works well for me. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to just finish off with a wee touch of varnish, just use your dubbing needle or in my, my case I just use the, the brush here 
it's a very fine varnish I'm using so make sure the eye is clean you can use a piece of wire or just like a piece of wire here just to make sure the eye is clean but I think it should it's okay just make sure the wire is clean yeah that's fine 